You're listening to The Last Man In Podcast. Covering Winnipeg hockey and the NHL. Shifley dances his way in. Shifley scores! Last Man In Podcast, episode number 131. I have it on my paper. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. No Dan this week again. Uh, so I believe it's called Hater's Corner. It this is. podcast. No. <laughs> We're not a Jets podcast anymore, apparently. I got some flack from, like, just text alone. Like, I got, well, clearly we got one from, like, friend of the show, Matt. He, he sends us reviews, both of us. Yeah. But, like, I got one from another friend, like, Andrew, who takes me to games all the time, which is Still awesome. Like, I love him for that. And, like, great friend. But he's like, he's like, you know, you should, if, if you're saying you're a Jets podcast, you should probably not shit on a, one of their best players for, like, ten minutes. I'm like, we ain't shit on him. Point out the obvious. He's the garbage man. He, he drives the dump truck. That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, we've said some regrettable things on this podcast before. That's, I don't regret I don't that regret the Shifley analysis. Because... <laughs> And you know like, what? I'm not, I'm not going to deny him. He, he's a decent player, and I think a lot of teams would have him. Yeah. And I think that when we look back at that deal in eight years, it's going to be a decent deal. Not yeah. like, not money saving. It's not going to be, you know, oh, you signed this guy for like a Duncan Keith it's deal. Like it's like a not Matt Stajan gonna... deal. You never regret it. It doesn't give you a lot out of it, but you get the deal. He's like a Matt Stajan deal. But yeah, the thing is, is, I still think it is remarkable in today's NHL to score a point a game. But the fact is, is... Like, you're scoring a point per game on a team that doesn't win. Yeah, and when you do... So, when they need you to score, yeah, you're not you, you really know, there. Exactly. The Matt Stajan... Effect. ...of contracts. Exactly. Yeah. That's what he got. Um, so, yeah. So, before we even get into what we're going to talk about today, we had a new fan of the show... Out of nowhere. ...was com- live commenting on YouTube his Oh, thoughts. that's why there was so many. Okay, yeah. I was trying I to believe it's live why. commenting on YouTube about okay. his thoughts on the podcast. He was Lady Gaga of the yeah. halftime show. He's just like, here we go! And just jumped in. Like, yeah. oh, jump so, to expectations! Or jump to conclusions. Yeah. Uh, you want me to read them off? We're going to read them off. Okay. So, this is... Uh, we encourage everybody to... Comment on our oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. It's, and we, it we normally a platform sh- to talk about. We too. normally share uh, the comments, but we thought we'd talk about these because it was it's awesome. But there's a lot of questions that we're going to answer before we get into the podcast. Yeah, I didn't even, like, know that there were comments till like, we hung out on Thursday night. So, like, two nights later, and Greg's yeah. like, did you see the comments? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I usually only check them, like, the day of the show. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Woo! <laughs> Stoke that fire. Okay, right, so just go through them and we'll kind of address them one by one. Okay, so I think the first one, I'll just go to the oldest one. Overall, the show was decently interesting. That was the last comment. That was a lot. La- oh, so uh, you want me to just go start to finish then, I guess? So, yeah. Okay. The, I swear if these guys... Yeah. Okay, so, okay. I believe that's where it Okay, I'll just start there. I swear if these guys think Aho is better than Line A. That's he, it. He's not, but Aho did get first star of the, of the week this week. Yeah. Oh, really? That's weird how that works. Hmm. But no, I, I I do think that Line A is a better player oh, than definitely. Sebastian Aho. But I think that Aho is going to be a good player on the Canes. That's my analysis. And of Aho. see, no, no. And when but, you like, say that, no, no, I agree with you too because Aho, like, because he is on the Carolina Hurricanes. When you see highlights, it's going to be of Sebastian Aho because he's yeah. creating those highlights. Exactly. Not that Patrick Liney isn't. But the Jets also have, like, a TSN and when, people broadcasting. When we're in Canada, yeah, exactly. When, they have other stat highlights to pull from. Like, mm-hmm. there's Dustin Bufflin, who usually has a hit a game. Or, like, Adam Lowry will throw a hit. Or Blake Wheeler will or blow past someone. Andre or Andre Pavlik will make an out-of-position really nice save. Yeah. Or um, <laughs> who, or Nick Nick Ehlers will, like, sell yeah. a slash, like, Alexei Kovalev level. Or like, my goodness. will capitalize when an entire team is standing still. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah it, <laughs> they, they, they take part. Uh, the next one. Why are these guys? Or Mark Shifley scored an empty netter. Oh, perfect. Leads into the next comment. Why are these guys at, is saying that Shifley is basically David Clarkson? He's I, not. I at didn't all. say that. Did uh, we say Clarkson? I don't know if we did. If we did, I will retract that. I don't think he's David Clarkson. I think, like I said, I think we'll look back on this deal and we'll say it's decent value for what he brings out. But the thing is, is if a guy scores sixty points and you're paying him six mil, that's decent value. It's just 
when is he scoring you those goals? Like, I think points are great, but what makes great players amazing, like what makes Crosby and Ovechkin huge is when the game is on the line, you can count on them, and I haven't seen that out of Shifley yet. Yeah, no, he not scores, He scores abundance of points, but it's when or is he getting those points? Is it when they're down by a goal? Or, you know, is it when they're playing a team like the Avalanche and they're down 5-3? Is he going out there and putting up two points like that? No, in, in a he's... Game? Okay, we're going to get to that. We'll leave my comment for game, that. But. I'm trying to think. Of, of any guy on the Jets roster, actually, like being honest, I'm trying to give a rundown. If your team, like say we're on a team, we're on the Leafs. Like we're yeah. playing on the Leafs. Okay. We're up by one with a minute left. Jets pull the goalie, and we have a defensive zone faceoff. They have offense. We're are up you, by one? or We the, are up by one. So, so Leafs wanna, are up by one. Leafs are up by one. Well, it's going to line. Line or Buffalo. So, oh, but do you fear them on the ice? Yes. I'm not afraid of Dustin Bufflin. And, uh, I, I, well, when line, already, by one? line already burnt the Leafs once this year, and he'll do it again. Because that's what Leaf fans are like. They, they just get they get a taste of it, and, and just so much pain and yeah. agony happens. But no, I honestly think okay, that... Okay, so it's Patrick Lining. I think Patrick Lining okay. and Dustin Bufflin, because of the fact that when you have a guy at the point, that it's the same with Shea Weber. You want to get that guy the puck because yeah. he directs it at the net at a speed that will make just random shit with the puck happen. Yeah, so it's, it's like going Aaron, to happen. It's like Aaron Rodgers throwing up a Hail Mary. You don't know what's going to happen, but fucking weird stuff happens, and it just... The hockey, the sports gods just come yeah, down. They're like, exactly. we have blessed you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dustin, you have the touch. Exactly. Okay, so next comment. Laval's jerseys are as nice as Line's golden flow. Parentheses, very nice. Mm, okay. okay. I don't think he's going to... Okay, whatever. I'll leave that Remember, one. this is all from one comment. Dude. Yeah. Uh, I do have in between... Do you want to leave racist fan rocks until after? After. Okay. The next comment was, do these guys even like the Jets? It's not that we dislike the Jets. It's just we're we point very out they're over critical of the Jets. Yeah, we, I'll say we're very critical of them. Where because we get over over like we live in Winnipeg. Yeah, like, we, that's get all we get over saturation of that's the Jets. All we get. So I'll, I'll just use an example. We're gonna talk. We're gonna touch on this in a second. But this is okay. Andre Pavlik is the worst goals against average on his team. At a, I believe it's a three point three four right now, which is terrible. Okay, and he's terrible. played I believe seven games for them. But the Jets are happy with his performance of making timely saves when I don't think he's played a game yet where many, he's allowed less than three goals. How many do the Jet? How many goals do the Jets average per game scoring? Because if it's above Around three, like oh, I, I so you're, you, yeah. you can't unless they average four or more goals. You can't be happy with that because no. that means you're losing games. Yeah. I'll continue with these comments. Uh, I think it's it, also a defensive problem. Yeah, yeah. Goal, and it was so. Jason Chimera, by the way. I'm not sure what that comment was, but it might have been towards milestones because Jason Chimera hit a thousand games. So I think it might have been that. If the Leafs fan guy thinks Matthews is better than Line, they tell that dude he is wrong AF. We actually had this quick conversation on Thursday together. Line A and Matthews fit both teams perfectly. It's not that they're better than one another. They'll always they're always going to be compared though because of the their same draft. way that Ovechkin and Crosby are compared. Yeah, but. Like, you could argue that, like, I, I think Crosby is better than Ovechkin, but Ovechkin scores more goals. And get like and you're going to have that with Austin and Patrick for the rest of their lives. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Let's be happy that we've got a competitive duo of rookies. And as friend of the show Matt says, it's time to just stop comparing them. Because yeah. they're two completely different players. Just appreciate and what they do. Like, like I've said as well, I, I think on this podcast, is like Matt, um, Matthews just scored his 24th goal of the year tonight okay. against the Islanders. If he scores 24 goals again in his career, like per season in his career, I think that's a very good benchmark for him, like 20 to 25 goals because I don't in- I never envisioned him of being the dominant goal scorer. Like Calder race, I 100% thought it was going to be Liney at the beginning of the year and that or I actually thought it was going to be Mitch Marner like Yeah, I me too. <laughs> but like you want it to be Matthews, but the other thing is he does the intangibles so well that you want that from a two-way strong center, you know, an Anze Kopitar, John Tavares type player. He's not a flashy number one. He, he's not a number one winger like Line a is. And Line a has more liberties that he can take on the defensive zone, in, inside the defensive zone where he doesn't have as much responsibility because wingers naturally don't have as much responsibility in the defensive zone as a center does. So, like, I'm not trying to deny any of his talent. Like, he's a very talented player. And, my, and as of right now, I'd say he is the front runner in the Calder race despite points because of just how well he's played. But you've also got to look where the teams are. 
Yeah, and I think and Zach Wierenski deserves it above anyone right now. Because, because of his, like, just... Like, it, it was almost like Wierenski was that final piece Columbus needed. Yep. And yep. he stepped in, and he did great. He's doing great. Wenberg's doing very well in Columbus as well. Oh, but, yes. uh, like, I, I think part of the Calder race will also come down to where those teams are in the standings. Like, if... At the end of the year, let's say Line and Matthews are both tied at 70 points. Which team has higher in the standings? Which team made the playoffs? Which team didn't? I, but I think then that also, then that would... Then there's there's so many intangibles. Like, here's, the, here's another but it's argument. Best condri- say if Jets finish 6th out of 7th in the Central, Leafs make the playoffs. Well, then people will be like, we'll give it to Matthews. But Central is arguably like, well, it's some not people this say year. I know, but some people, being Jets fans, will just say, I'll take the Jets side of it because I hear it every day where they say, well, the Central's still the best division. I'd say the best division this year is the Metro. Metro. Uh, the, the East. By far. In the East in general. But no, the Atlantic is, is a fairly favorably weak division, but you've got to look at, okay. How many teams are making the playoffs? But, but out no, of no, that, no, no, no. Right? It's not just that. It's where were the Jets last year? What did adding line A do to the Jets? Oh, yeah. Left them stagnant. If they don't make playoffs, right? Yeah. But adding Matthews to the Leafs, or adding Marner to the Leafs, or adding Nylander to the Leafs, that all made them a better team at yeah. the end of the day. So that, I think, also has to go into voting. But I don't yeah. want to spend too much time on this. Yeah, our next vote. comment. Meat and taters, that's legendary in reference to Nolan Patrick. Yeah. Uh, and then, just fo- uh, this was a... Now, the next few are digs at Greg, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I know so. Just <laughs> followed you guys on Twitter. I was your 67th follower. Huh. The last time the Leafs won the Cup, hashtag LMAO. You know what's yep. funny about that is that the the uh, Winnipeg Jets franchise has as many Cups as the Leafs and the Flyers do uh, ever. Like, since the 67 year. Nope, that's a lie. Fly. We'll Flyers start. have won. Yeah, that's right. Some 74, fan. 75. Since the Jets have been inaugurated. I was inaugurated trying to join into, you. No, since the Jets have yeah. been inaugurated into the NHL, the Leafs, Jets, Flyers, along with a lot of other teams, including the St. Louis Blues and Vancouver yep. Canucks, have the same amount of championships. Yeah. So you got to, I mean, I use the argument of winning a cup, but now we just use the argument when I'm arguing with Jeff Jets fans, just playoff game wins. That's what I use now. But see, that's a crutch. It's a stupid crutch that I use that I shouldn't. But the thing is, is like, I don't want to cheer, like, my thing is I don't want to cheer against the Jets to lose. Like, if they make the playoffs and they ha- go on a run, oh, I want them to win. We were here. It was very exciting. Yes. It was very, like, the city was a buzz. I've talked to Draper about this. Like, I've had, like... Friends who do not watch sports at all. Suddenly they're coming to people like, hey, Cam, where do I get jet stuff? Yeah, exactly. You know what? It's good for everyone. Yeah. Like, it's good for everyone. If you're a pessimist if the Jets, like me the and you thing. don't like hoppers, then it's not here's great. The but it's good for the city. The Jets, when they came back, was the best economic boost for the city that they needed. Because now you have True North Square coming in. Now you've got um, Canada Summer Games coming in. You've got so much, uh, or Western... Canada games. Yeah. Regardless, you've got a lot of stuff happening in the city. You know, Women's World Cup came here. I don't think before the Jets came back, I don't know if that was envisioned. No, because, I don't think so at all. Just because they, like, they put that new hotel in downtown. There's a bunch of a downtown revitalization in Winnipeg. So the Jets coming back was huge. The biggest thing is, is it's not that we absolutely detest the Jets. It's that we want more accountability because we feel that the city is too... E- some people are very, very hard on them for negative reasons, but I feel that they get for the a most free part, pass exactly everywhere. Yeah, they get everywhere. A free pass. Like I was, uh, I went to watch WWE yesterday afternoon, and friend of the show Kevin, I went with him and his girlfriend, and the table next to us, they were like, "Oh, Jets get a goalie during the playoffs, guaranteed." You, that's good to be optimistic. Do, I don't, don't know. That. I don't know if it would happen. Neither but right. but, it's but like, I want to talk about. They're that. giving Let's... them a fr- like. Anyways, I'll keep. I'll keep with these comments. They're almost done. Yeah, I should come on that friggin' show. You could actually talk about the Jets for a significant significant amount of time. We always talk about yeah, the Jets yeah, yeah, yeah. for like Regardless. over a quarter of the. T- exactly. We give you fifteen minutes every week at least. Yeah, exactly. And depending on if Carrie and Dan are on the show, we get like a yeah, forty yeah. minutes. Exactly. Continue. Uh, if you guys watch a prospect game, you would see that Patrick is more than a big, strong center. Patrick yep. is a very smart player and might end up being something like Joe Thorne, but very likely not quite as good. Nolan is a clear, a clearly a pass first player. We said that. We said all of those things. Well, no, the thing is, though, is I, I like whoever gets Nolan Patrick. I think the top three picks in this draft, uh, 
what is it, um, Misher or Nish- Heeshier. Heeshier, Liljegren, and Patrick are very strong players and they're going to be adequate to whatever team they go on. Yeah, just depends so, on who they're going to. Exactly. When Nolan Patrick becomes a Las Vegas Golden Knight, maybe, uh, we don't really know what the Lock team name is. We know it. We know but it. we don't know what the team name is going to be, though. But You're when right, Las Vegas. He's part of Vegas. Uh, you get Heeshier on the Avalanche, and then I'm going to say Liljegren is going to go to the Coyotes. Oh. Which is fine. There lock it go. in. Yep, but, lock it in. We know it already. Is that it for the comments? Oh, uh, one more. Okay. Overall, this show was decently interesting. Still in perplex about the dissing of Shifley. <laughs> what the fuck more do you want from the guy? My dude is on pace for 84 points. Yeah, good for him. And we would be Arizona without him. That $6 million contract is going, is going to luck good. Right. Fuck Shifley is the fifth in the league scoring, and he played less games than McDavid and Burns. We've are, we covered that right at the start. Yeah. Shifley's, yeah, he's good for what he is. Uh, I just want to say, not me, not me. Luke commented. Thanks, Luke. Luke commented. We'll listen. I like how you you know when he comments. Because I was... No, because you comment. It's not... There, you have yet never Luke missed. has commented. You have we'll never... listen in hopes of more fruitful Radko Gudis discussion. We can talk about Radko Gudis and how he's going to get dealt off the flyers this year. I dare you. But oh. here's the thing. What? You know every time Luke comments. Yeah, because I have to read the comments. No, because you didn't even know this guy commented, but you knew Luke commented. Yeah, because when I was reading the comments, yeah. when you told me yeah, to go look, that yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Okay. And then racist fan rocks, rocks commented, by the way, opening line, I used to say this all the time because I thought it was the greatest. And then when I said it out loud, I'm like, that sounds really stupid. Uh, I'm not trying to make fun of you, racist fan rocks. Andy, Andy, calm your tits. And if the NHL players are allowed to go to the Olympics, what teams do you think are a sleeper heavy favorite underdog? Uh, the big four, I would say. And what team can pull whoa, off whoa, a big whoa, underdog? Upset? Hold on. Oh. They, uh, 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 what team can pull off a big upset? I think the Germans are the sleeper. Different. Uh, USA heavy right favorite. Up. Latvia's underdog. I okay. would say um, Denmark underdog. I think Denmark underdog with Ehlers. Uh, no. Uh, I could also see the Swiss doing something. Oh, Swiss is who I'm thinking of. Yeah, the Nino Niederreiter and he, uh, Nico Hishia. Timo, Timo Mir. Yep. Oh, and they got, a, I mean, Jonah Hiller. He'll be there. Jonas Hiller. <laughs> well, he still plays. Yeah. Uh, and then the heavy favorites, clearly the big four, like yeah. always. Uh, and then a sleeper. The sleeper would be Denmark. That'd Denmark. be my sleeper, if they make if it. If they make it, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are the comments. Okay, sweet. So if you want your comment... Comment on our YouTube, and we'll feature you. In we the normally show. talk about it. Like I know there had been comments of you know, previous like, weeks, we, but they're just quite exactly. Less. It wasn't Luke, so you didn't know what happened. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, Luke, had, Luke. I was very excited he commented. It's like there's no. I'm never gonna get through the end of this, so no. that's fine. Uh, so the Jets. So for the rest of the show, we're gonna we're gonna reel it back here. Yeah, and talk more. So. Uh, we're going to talk about the Jets and kind of their last week since our last podcast. We're going to talk some trade deadline stuff and then just kind of some other random stuff and then go to Patrick Sprite. So we don't have a ton left on the show anyways. Yeah, perfect. Let's but do we'll it. make it last because it's me and you. And we yeah, we can to... ramble on. Exactly. Now the time. The time is now. So Jets played the Stars on Thursday. Yep. And it was their chance to go for three in a row again. Well, actually, hold on. The night that we did the podcast, they played again too. 5-3 win. So it was two in a row. So tonight... Or that night, the Stars, they were going for three. three. First time since April of last year? April of last year. Bad. April of That's not impressive. No. That's not a playoff team. Hard to, hard to make playoffs when you can't string three wins together, which I was laughing at because right before that, like that night I was watching a Flyers like recap, and they're like, yeah, the Flyers can't really put, seem to string together more than four or five wins in a row. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> so that's the difference of a playoff team and a Jet team. Got it. So, what happened in the Stars game? They won 4-3, but barely. <laughs> oh, so they won their first first time they won three in a row this season. They continue their dominance over the Central Division overall. Um, they have been very, very good against that division. I think after this game, they sat like 12-4-1 against that division, which is how you want to play against your division. But uh, they sure made it close. They sure didn't make it easy yeah, on themselves. We watched it together. Yeah. <laughs> the last minute, you're like, oh, God, they're scoring. They're going to score here. And, like, I think the Stars, like, four or five chances to, like, put it away. The Stars lost the, the Stars lost their chance to tie the game. The Jets didn't win the game. The Jets lucked out, lucked into a win on that yeah. one. So, I mean, it was good. 
So they got their third win, and then what happened on but, this road trip that they're on? Then they decided, we're going to go out and play... Colorado. The Avalanche, who are the worst team in the NHL. What, what, I don't know how many points they had, but I knew they had 13 wins. Not great. Not, not necessarily... They're playing the a historically bad season. That's why all of their top guys are like, hey, you want, you want <laughs> trade bait? Come on down to Colorado. The Avalanche currently have 30 points this season in 49 games played. Not bad. Not that is bad. only uh, 30 points in 49 games. Mm, yeah. Okay. The Jets have 24 more points than, than the Avalanche. So <laughs> and the Jets... On, on no, paper, this, this looks like an easy win. And I think the Jets treated it that way. Yep. It's like when the and San Diego Chargers... this wasn't a back-to-back. This was not a back-to-back no, either. Like, this was like... You had a day and a half off, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, afternoon game, no, nonetheless, still kind of... But this is in a San Diego what's there? Uh, this is San Diego, Cleveland. You know, this team's 0 14. We're going to go in there. We're going to uh, we're going to win, and we're going to improve our record now to like four and twelve this season, yeah, or go, four and go 11. for a night on the town in Denver before maybe. You know? Yeah, maybe maybe they did. Maybe they thought this is going to be easy. Let's you go know, enjoy they Denver. Don't really have, they don't have talent on Colorado. They don't have uh, Nathan McKinnon, Matt Duchesne, Gabriel Landeskog, Miko Rantanen. They don't have any decent players on that no, team. None. So what happens? <laughs> They go into intermission down 2-1. Then they go into intermission down 3-2. And then they lose the game 5-3 overall. So, Now, what happened in this game? Did you watch it? Uh, I listened to part of it on the radio. Okay. Uh, I watched part of it. They just looked uninspired all game. Just yep, they looked did. like they didn't care. I'm going to read off some quick stats here. Okay. Now, the Jets have played the Avalanche four times this season. Four, okay. The Avalanche have beat them twice. twice. One in overtime. Okay. So it was okay. Now, here's the breakdown of those games. 1-0 Jets, 3-2 Avs in OT, 4-1 Jets, 5-2 Avs. Okay. What is going on? Like, they should absolutely obliterate this team. With the talent they have, they should obliterate this team. Yes. Agreed. Like, it, there's no two ways around it. But it also, when your star player gets trucked twice. Yeah, Shifley got absolutely... Now, after the first time he got crunched... Twice. Yeah. The first time he got crunched, coming out at the start of the second period, very shift, first shift of the second period, he essentially charged at Zadarov, but glided in to make it look like the hybrid charge, which the ref probably would have called it if he hit him. But Zadarov spun out of the way. But the way Shifley was playing for the rest of the game after getting trucked was like, when you're coaching, you're a coach. When a player, like something doesn't go his way and he's upset about it, and he's, you know he's better than how he's playing, but he's, like, letting his mind, like, oh, I'm, I'm above this. Like, I'm going to avenge what happened. Oh, yeah. Shaifu's playing like that, but not with his skill, with his, like, he was just trying to hit people. Yeah. And then, so every time there was a no call or anything, Shaifu looked like the, what? Come on! Like, every time he took the ice after he got crunched. And he got crunched, like, halfway through the first, and then, I think halfway through the second. Halfway through the second's, Hit of the year candidate. He got flipped. Like, fully flipped. Flipped. Full flip. Nikita Zadarov. So, I just think, like, I, I don't know if you have this written. I think you do. But, like, with a team like this, where do you go? Like, is it... They got they need changes. Like, I don't know. Like, they should be obliterating Colorado. Like, they should go in. At the end of the first intermission, they should be up at least two, two to three goals at that point. Especially considering Rolimov's gone. Like, Calvin Picard's a great goalie. Clearly, he's in the NHL. But, like, you shouldn't... He's got a better save percentage than oh, yeah. two goalies yeah. the Jets have. That aren't the, the goalie that played the ass? Like, did Patrick yeah, play the ass? Explain this to me. Like, Calvin Picard has a 903 this year, is on the league's worst team... And somehow has a better save percentage than both Hutchinson and Pavlik. And almost a better one than Hellebuck. And I know what some people are saying. Well, he just gets more shots at him. I don't think that's the case necessarily. But the thing is, is I've noticed it with Colorado this year. It's maybe not that they're a bad team. They just don't have a compete every night. They don't compete every night. Certain games they get up for, certain games they don't. When they play against the Jets, sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. When they played against the Leafs earlier this year, they showed up, and they can play well, and they can play the way that they should, which is a lot of speed and create a lot of havoc because I think the shots early in this game were 9-2 to for the Avalanche when they were up one nothing early in the game. 
Like, and they can pour it on a team. They have the offensive talent. Like, I, look at their top six. They are a young top six, but it's not like it's a shitty top six. You have Lannis Cog, McKinnon, Rantanen is your top line. Yep. Then you have Aginla, Duchesne, and I be- I'm trying to think who their other left wing is. Um, maybe Tangay or is he no? He's fine. He's gone. Oh, okay, he well, gone. That, I don't even watch NHL anymore. Um, nonetheless, like, fuck. I know that I should know who this is. None the like that's still not. I mean, it's and not then, a great team, but that top Mikhail line. Mikhail Grigorenko. Yeah. Uh, you have Joe Colburn, who scored three goals in his first game and hasn't scored since. It's okay. Uh It's I, a lot of it is defensively, like Eric Johnson. Hurt right now, that doesn't help. Simeon Varlamov hurt, that doesn't help as well. They need a change, but I don't think the Avs are as bad as their record is. Um, but in regards to the Jets, because I want to touch on the Avs a bit, uh, in, a, in a bit here, but in regards to the Jets, I think a lot of it is defense. Well, I was... And I still don't think that Bufflin is the answer. I I you know my stance on Dustin Bufflin like I didn't think they, I don't think they should have signed him. No. I think they should have walked. And I've talked to like a few people like not even on the podcast just off the podcast who are Jets fans who say like Dustin Bufflin when he's on and he's like in the game in the mode very hard to stop. But that glimmer of light it's like uh when you're when you're in the middle of summer and the, you have a sunbeam your drapes close but you have a beam of light. Yeah. When you're in that beam of light feels great it's very nice but that beam of light is so minuscule compared to the size of the room you're in or in a house and Dustin Bufflin's always everywhere but in that gleam of light this is a really weird comparison but Dustin Bufflin like for the times that he's great I it is not worth it for the times that he's not great because let's just go back to my favorite comparison for the Jets they're in a playoff stretch to make the playoffs they ended up making it but he cross checks JT Miller in the back of the neck when the puck is nowhere near him, allegedly to protect his goalie. JT Miller was pushed into the goalie by his defensive party, to, partner, Tobias Enstrom, at that time. Mm-hmm. That does nothing. JT Miller's not a threat in that game, and the puck's not near you, and he gets suspended the last four games of the season. Pretty sure I'd rather have Dustin Bufflin in the game than not even allowed to play the game. Although the Jets, for some reason, when there are injuries, they seem to play better, except this year, where... Well, Dustin Bufflin... No, it's when Dustin Bufflin's in the lineup, they're better. Team. Oh, that's where you... Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, like... It's... Think every time Dustin Bufflin's been hurt. Is they the team better. better? Yeah, oh, def- on defense? Oh, yes. Like, cohesively uh, as a unit? Oh, head and shoulders better. I would argue that Tyler Myers is... Tyler Myers and Jacob Trouba should be the future of this team on defense with mm-hmm. on the right side. Yep. With Josh Morrissey. Who's adapted on flawlessly on the left side. Exactly. Wait, and he's has, left-handed. Yeah. Never mind. Josh Morrissey. Okay. <laughs> but no, he's he's playing very well. He's adapted well to the NHL game, which is where I thought you were going with it. Um I think the Jets have more confidence and I think it's a security blanket for them to keep Bufflin around. Because they're like, well, he's been with us all this time, and we haven't been that bad with him. But there needs to be a point where if you want to have a Brent Burns type player, he needs to start playing like Brent Burns. But the truth is, Dustin Bufflin isn't like Brent Burns. He's a much worse version of Brent Burns. He's not... Compa- he's, I don't think he's that no, comparable to Brent Neither Burns. is P.K. Subban. He's nowhere near P.K. Subban. He's nowhere near Shea Weber. Although, I don't fear. I don't think I'd fear going down Dustin Bufflin's side because I know it can beat him in foot speed. If I'm an NHL player, NHL can, caliber player, yep. I'm going down his side instead of Josh because Moore. he gets turnstiled every game. And again, again, I use this comparison thousands of times. Tobias Enstrom, um, Ben Sherratt, a couple years ago, maybe even last year, and Josh Morrissey. They lead, when they play with Dustin Bufflin, they lead the league. In being the one of the two-on-one when the puck's coming back yep. this way, when Dustin Bufflin goes to pinch or throw a ill-timed hit, and he misses. But like people have said, he's an X-factor. You don't get that with any other player because he can change the game like that. Does he, though? Not anymore. To me, he doesn't. This season, it's, he hasn't. This season, he hasn't. Even previous seasons. Like, I was looking back, like, his best season with the Jets, 
was when he had, what, 58 points? Okay. Yeah. 56 or something. But what I saw also, how long has Maurice been coach for? Three years? Three years now. The last year that, I think I might even have it. Either way, I was looking at his um, his production penalty minutes wise. The year, the last year that uh, Noel. Claude Noel was his coach for the full season, I think he had like 87 points or penalty minutes. The next year, the last three years, he's had upwards of 110 penalty minutes because he's he's just they it it's almost like he doesn't listen to what the coach has to say and you can't have a guy getting paid that much in a position that he's in like a leadership role he has he has a letter right yeah, I believe so. yeah you can't have a guy like that on the team getting paid that much he's going to rub off on the younger guys like you don't want Jacob Tuba to learn that way you want to you want guys to learn like uh like Brent Burns he's always doing interviews he's always got a smile on his face he's always like He's in with the coach when the coach is drawing up plays. He's there. He's watching. Dustin Bufflin, I don't see that very often. Like, I, I don't think he draws plays, but I'm just saying, like, he. it seems like he's just like, no, I can do it on my own. It's fine. You can't have that on an NHL team if you want to be successful. Everyone's got to buy in, and I don't think he's buying in all the time, and you can't have that with a guy who's getting paid. What, I forget what he's getting paid, but in a leadership role and what he gets paid, I wouldn't touch that with 10-foot pole. Or the length of a Tobias Sandstrom hockey stick. Yes. Uh, I think he's a decent hockey player. I think that he might be slightly overpaid. But I think for what the Jets want him to be, which is the Shea Weber or the P.K. Subban or the Brent Burns of their defensive core, I don't think they have the right guy there. Um, and we've just, we discussed this last year. By the time he's done his contract, he's over 35, right? Yeah, but so is Brent, Bur- or so is Brent Burns, right? Brent but Burns signed where, where are San Jose right now? Top, if, top if not second in their oh, division. Oh, okay. Where, where, where's, where's Montreal right now? Oh, yeah. Okay, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, they're all top of their division, if not like second or third in their conference. They're, they're going four cups. Yeah, they're in... The Jets right now are not. Yeah. If 2019 is true, like, and the Jets are competing for the cup in 2019, which means Jeez. they got to get some playoff experience in the next that would two be years. In two years from now. Okay. Yep. Uh, means they got to make it next year because they're probably not making it this year. Well, normally, and yeah. then and get the experience and win the next year. Dustin Bufflin is going to be in his third year of that contract, and I would be shocked if his game hasn't started to decline by then. It's the same thing with Shea Weber. People are saying it's not about year one, year two. It's beyond that. That mm-hmm. people are worried about. Like, in 2019, is Shea Weber going to be the same player he is this year? Probably not. That's fair to say about declining. pretty much everyone who isn't, like, 22 when they sign their contract. But, no, I, I know. But what no, I'm, I'm s- with you on this. Okay. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is I have not seen out of Dustin Bufflin something that tells me that he's able to be the defensive guy on this team. And the fact is, is his value right now is high enough that they can get a very good return. They don't have to worry about some, uh, losing a player like Matthew Perot in the expansion draft. It's true. You're, you're, his value is still high enough that the return is going to be pretty mm-hmm. substantial. And you sure, you're pr- most likely, allegedly, going to be on the losing end because they're losing Dustin Bufflin. But that that type of trade, I would think what Dustin Bufflin would involve... Dustin Bufflin. You know who and hasn't suffered without Dustin Bufflin? Uh, Chicago. The Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Not even. Yeah, but that's also because they had Duncan Keith and. He Brent wasn't Seymour. even a forward. He was a. Uh, he was a forward, sorry. He wasn't even a defenseman when he was there. That's right. And the X factor that, you know, immo- immobilized uh, Chris Pronger during that playoff run. Yep. Yeah, sure. He was an X factor in that, but they were still able to win two more cups without this X factor. It's also because they had the they have talent. They buttons. had the fortune of having two back to back number or two back to back very high picks. One was one, and the other one was three. Regardless, I would say that right now, as forwards, the Jets have the same talent level as what the Blackhawks have. Okay. All right. Yes, Taves and Kane are better than any other forward we have, but Line A. And Shifley, and Ehlers, and Wheeler are all better than anybody else that they have. Because you want to talk Artemi Panarin better than any of those guys? He has fallen off a 20-foot cliff since the beginning of the season. 
Yes, but Marion also, Hosa is not the player he used to be. Yeah, but then you look at like what they you see what what makes the Blackhawks great, and like even the LA Kings great, and like Cup contenders great every year is that they can get the most bang for their buck. Oh, I know the Jets I'm not saying that. aren't getting the most no, bang. They're, they're giving not. the bang for their buck. They're they're like, oh, here you go, that's yours and this. Yeah, I want to move off Justin Bufflin. Yeah, just last word on him. Do you think they should move him, or do you think that he might be part of the cause of this? Oh, like 100%. his. Played not being... I'm not wavering. I've never wavered on this. I don't think they should have signed him. I would be 100% for moving him. Yeah. He doesn't... I'm not... When the Flyers come to town once a year, and I'm decked out in my Flyers gear, I love when Dustin Bufflin's on the ice. Because the Flyers, like most teams, know exactly how to get power plays. Target Dustin Bufflin, yeah. go after the star players, piss off Bufflin. That's not an X factor to me. Yes. 100% I would move him. I think the Jets are so bad because of their defense. I don't think it has anything to do with the forward group. I think they actually have a pretty decent forward group right now. They're getting a lot out of Andrew Kopp, who's relishing in the fact that he's playing on the first line. Um, and he's looked great. You know, Brian Little, to me, is still probably the most one of the most underrated players in the league. Regardless of that fact, their defense needs a shakeup. Uh, the fact that they have two guys that were still... Like, realistically, this is... The two guys they've been most hesitant in moving... Since the Atlanta franchise have been Tobias Enstrom and Dustin Bufflin. And they're the things that are holding this team back right now. Is the fact that they sh- they're they paying those guys $12 million. And I can name you a handful of players that are better than them. That can play as a duo for a lot less money. Two players equaling $12 million. Okay. Less. No, no, no. I'm saying like they, they're equal to $12 million. Yeah. I'd rather a four three million dollar players because they're going to do bit parts, but they're like it's it's about depth now in the NHL too and effectiveness. Yeah. And with the players, they with, don't have depth with, after their top four. They no, don't no, have but depth. that's what I'm saying. Like with Wheeler, Shifes, Line A, Ehlers, and then say if you brought in just hypothetically, it was Toby and Buff got traded to the same team and they got four three million dollar players back. Hypothetically, you could spread the wealth. You can yeah. find chemistry. Like if you let yeah. it happen and work it out, I it can work. Thing. And right. like that's that's what it, that's what it's all about now. Winning championships, you need depth, With, you yeah. need chemistry, and you need like versatility. And yeah. Toby, every time they play a central division, what do you see Tobias Sandstrom doing? Kicking Chasing the, the puck in his corner yeah. because everyone goes to Toby right. because you target Toby. It doesn't matter who's pl- how good his defensive partner is. Yeah. You can't offset the fact that you're now playing two on one handicap because yeah. he just got hit. I, I just I know that Dustin Bufflin's loved in this city, and I don't think that will ever change. And he can come up with a big hit, but I think right now, with what this team needs, is they don't need a 32-year-old defenseman that isn't playing his best hockey on their blue line. They also don't need a, I believe, 30-year-old Tobias Enstrom on their blue line. If they could go out and they could get, I don't even know who'd be available, but like, Nathan Billiou, I still think, would bring a lot to this team. Oh, he's young. He's he's two way. He has an offensive side, but he also. I, this is he's every NHLer. Smart. Every NHLer. He's smart. He know he picks and chooses yeah. his battles. No, I agree. Which is funny that we're saying this now because every NHLer knows when to pick and choose. But it seems as though with the players we're talking about, with either I'll say their just, upside I'll, seems to be there. Yeah, more and, often than they're down. Like every player has a downside. Yeah, but it seems that with. Uh, certain players that their upside shows more than their downside does. And from what I've seen with, you know, these some of these younger defensemen is they're brought up in a junior uh, league where they're allowed, allowed a lot of leniency. But when it come, when push comes to shove, when these guys are winning championships, when they're on championship winning teams, which is something we'll probably see with Mikhail Zergachev when he comes in the NHL next year, uh, is that they know when the game is on the line, when there's a big play needed to be made, they know what their role is and how to properly execute it because that's how they've always played. They, sure, they can be dazzling and score, you know, 60, 70, 80 points in junior as a defenseman, but they know when to properly play their position. Like Eric Carlson, a lot of people want to pick on him all the time and say, well, he's not that great of a defenseman. He can just push the puck and score a lot. But he, I wouldn't put him in the bottom, like, I don't think he's in the bottom two-thirds of the league in defense. Like, defensibility, I still think he's in the top third. Of, oh, like top third of the league at playing of defense? All well, the yeah. defensemen. Well, yeah, when you're playing but that much, too. But I don't put Buffalo there. No, go, no, no, never. 
Like, but for a guy now, that eats now up it that sounds like we're beating up on Bufflin, but it's like, like we were beating up on Shifley last week. Yeah, but even like I like how you named Nathan Bolier because he was a part of the dynasty that was the St. John Sea Dogs, like yeah. championship level players. Like even if you don't win, I'll use I know I'll just use what I know. Ivan Provorov not putting up ridiculous numbers as a rookie, not expected to as a defenseman especially, mm-hmm. but w- he's leading the Flyers in time on ice as a defenseman as a rookie. Mm-hmm. Mind you, the Flyers' decor is pretty bad, like pretty horrendously bad. But he's played on teams that have had huge, like WHL, he went to the Memorial Cup. They didn't do great, but when you're playing against championship caliber teams, you learn those lessons. Like even in beer league or like as a younger kid, when you play in big tournaments and you're put in these positions, it's hammered home. You don't remember, like you don't rely on your skill, you remember your... Well, kind of your skill, but you basically remember like the lessons that were implemented. And when you're on a good team... There's good coaches, and it's reflected by the entire organization mm-hmm. that you're taught proper things to do. Okay. There's two things I want to add before yep. we have to move on. Cool. The first thing I want to add is I think Kevin Shattenkirk would rel- would be very, very good on the Winnipeg Jets. I was going to say Shattenkirk, or you were thinking would, would which defense and which you go after. Bufflin, uh, would be better than Dustin Bufflin. The last thing I want to mention is I think part of the other thing with this team is they've lost for so long. That it's very hard to find a way to win. Look at the Manitoba Moose. They're still shit. Like, they're still a bad team. They don't win a lot of games. Sure, it sucks that they've lost Cop and uh, Patan, Patan uh, Marco Dano, Josh Morrissey. You know, some guys that are very, very good on that team. And Julian Melchiori, who's been up and down all year. But I think there's just been a culture since the move to Winnipeg of time... And it's okay that we lose because we'll win it when eventually. Eventually, we're going to win. But well, when is that eventually to, line you, happening? You need to eventually instill winning into your organization. There needs to be a point where your organization needs to start winning. And your players, you have a ton of them on this team that don't know how to win. Yeah, well, it's like it's. I don't. I don't think it's this dire. But even in the, it's not with uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Like yeah. you saw, like. After interviews of losing, they were just like, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And then what changed that? They cleared front office. They cleared management. They cleared coaching. Yeah. They brought new people in who were like, no, it's not okay to lose. I want you to break a stick when we lose by one. Like, that's yeah. unacceptable. You can't be like, oh, we'll get them next time, guys. And the that's media not here, what professional... You're a yeah. professional. You it's, great to to f- it's great to find the positivity in things. And obviously, we're, we might be a little bit more pessimistic than some... But I'm not. I'm not saying that we should clear front office. I don't think that's where the problem is. I don't no, think no, I'm not saying. I was yeah. just using that as an example. I think part of it's just the culture of some of the guys in that room and guys like Dustin Bufflin who haven't won in five or six years. It's a. T- it takes a toll on you. Blake Wheeler hasn't won in five or six. Has years. Has he ever been to the playoffs besides with the Jets? Did he go with Boston? I'm assuming he was there his rookie year. His like first few years that like yeah. Boston was always good. Yeah, they've always so been. I, yeah. I'm sure he was. Fine there, but the thing is, is I think that they just need to learn how to win, and that maybe we're rushing it a little bit, and maybe the Jets have rushed it a little bit with the way they're doing things. So, it'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds, obviously trade deadline, and then we'll see what happens after the expansion draft. Yeah. Um, I also don't think this year's all lost, I think after like going into trade deadline we'll really know if they have an, a chance to win because everyone will be done their bye week by then so and you got little p- picks like people are already starting to like shake and do like little moves with their AHL guys but all the guys like, who are doing moves you're like oh that's for the Vegas expansion draft like all the moves i've seen so far is clearly for like yeah. oh Vegas like oh can you help me i'll help you like every trade that i've seen so far has been like a little move. Yeah. Like that's like, I'm like, oh, okay. That's or like fine. a little waiver pick up like Marchenko to, to yeah. Leafs. Yeah, what's up or, with him? I don't know. Just was... history of Babcock and he took him right-handed yeah. D. Did they, did that Corrado, affect Corrado? Corrado went down to the Marlies. He cleared waivers. Uh, the other thing too was Barbario, who Mar- was Barbario, yes. part of the National Predator organization, was okay. sent on waivers and the Avalanche picked him up. Okay, all right. Um, and then there's also Mike Rivero going on waivers, and he cleared. Regardless good of that, for him. I do believe that it's time for the Jets to look outside their organization for goalie help. Yep. The three goalies I have in mind here are Flurry, Howard, and Bishop. Bishop's a big ask. Like, are we convinced that... 
I'm not Tampa's saying Tampa's set on Vasilevsky already? They're set on not Bishop for the future. So it's just, it's, it's not Vasilevsky, but it's not Bishop. Like they they saying, also have Guzlevskis. Oh, yeah. That, okay, no, no, that's they, what like I'm getting at. I'm, I'm have, forgetting. They have a goalie pool. And it's not that the Jets don't. Like, Eric Carmery and Connor Hellebuck are probably going to become exceptional goalies. But it's tough in a goal. Like, when a goalie's under 25, it's not every goalie flourishes. Like, Steve Mason has had bumps in the road over his career. He's still not stellar. No. Nope. Has on games, has off games. Let's Sergei in Bobrovsky got Catholics. traded. Yeah. Like, he got traded to Columbus, and he wasn't amazing until, he, like, the last couple of years. He but was, that's a, also he was to, a Vesna candidate, then was hurt, and then came back this yep. year and Vesna candidate again this year. Like, and it also it's depends just, on... It's your, very wishy-washy. It's well, not... But it also, that depends on your franchise and your goaltending, your coaches. It's mm-hmm. huge yep. with a goalie, too. Mm-hmm. Like, monstrous. So, I... I wouldn't be against them going out and getting through. Like... Gary Lawless put an article and said, like, which, what every Canadian team should go after, like, what player they should target. Yep. And Marc Andre Fleury was his number one pick for Winnipeg to go after. And would I, you, I'm fine trying to trade works. for that. Would you do a player? Or would you do a pick? Knowing the Pens, it's going to be a player because they go on cup runs. Okay. You, the thing is, is it's going to be a player, but the difference is the player going to the Pens. W- the Jets will absorb some of the contract because the Jets most likely will not be going to the playoffs. And, con- st- and Fleury's have- contract is up, I think? Uh, Fleury's contract still has, I believe, another year. Oh, on beautiful. It this year. Oh, I didn't know that. But, okay. um, but the thing is, and th- then they would have to protect him, right? The thing is, is uh, whoever goes the other way, it would free up some cap room for the Pens, and that, that would almost be what the Pens are getting is cap room from the Jets. Because the Jets have the cap room to absorb Marc Andre Fleury uh, and think, his contract, I think I know exactly where you're going. What player would you send there? I'm gonna say yes I, or I'm no. I'm thinking two of them. There's two okay. different players I have in my Who head. Who are the two? Who do you think? I think one of them is Drew Stafford. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For sure. I think uh, Drew Stafford's one, and then I don't think it would work. But Tobias Enstrom would be the other one. But you'd have to find a way to work. But you can absorb some of their contract. Absorb 50%. Yeah, and what's... And what's, you're, you're really... You look good. You're helping out the Penguins. So then when you go back to them in a couple years, when you're hopefully trying to win, you can go out and get Phil Kessel from them for a, a, a discount. Don't do that to me. Do you don't you to, do it. You would get a Kessel Jets jersey. You cannot lie. I'm like this close to getting a Shakes jersey. Like Shamorisi. Yeah. Ooh, but I told myself I wouldn't... But like if Phil Kessel came, like... Oh, you man. have to. Oh, he's one of my top three favorite and NHL players of like pretty much all time. So yes, like I wouldn't. But I wouldn't I'd think about it. But I'd probably I probably get it. I think the Jets are set on not having Stafford come back again. You know what I? So I would why love not about that? Get rid of him. Is when the Pens were in the playoffs and Stafford was scoring. The Jets fans on Twitter would be like, "Oh, how come we couldn't do it with us? Because Penguins have players the Jets don't have. Yeah. They can make. They can reignite careers. The HBK line." All of those guys were booted from their towns or, like, kicked out. They were like, no, nope, we don't want you kicked to the curb. Yeah. And then they were the greatest line for th- four months in hockey. They are yeah. the greatest line. They were so Unstoppable. Too. Yeah. But it also helps when you're the third line on a team and you're behind <laughs> Crosby. And then you have um, Malkin, who's making Brian Rust look like an all-star player. Like Connor Sheary is playing with uh, Sidney Crosby. Like, yeah. what is going on? Yeah, exactly. Regardless of that, yep. um, we already touched on what else they should do to improve. They should help. goaltending. Yeah, goaltending and defense. That's like they're four. They have decent forwards, and yeah. they have decent they forwards in their in their uh, in their system. Now the Avalanche. Okay. Okay. Listen to this forward group and tell me this sounds like a forward group that's in last place in the league. Rene Bork, Joel Colbert. Um This is in points. Most points. No, 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 no. This is just oh, you're just overall. naming. Them. Okay, yeah. Bork, Colburn. Jake, uh, Joe Colburn, Blake Como, Matt Duchesne, Mikhail Gregorenko, Jerome Genla, Gabriel Landeskog, Nathan McKinnon, Alex Martinson, I think it's Alex, Andreas Martinson, John okay. Mitchell, Matt Nieto, Miko Ranton, and Carl Soderberg. Okay, when you're naming those players, what's going through my mind is young up-and-coming players, players who are past their prime, and players who are waiver wire pickups who are just have been given up on, and but there's a reason they've been given up on. They don't have a 27 to 30-year-old player on that team, pretty much. That so it's either a, under tw- under 26 or above 30. Mm-hmm. 
basically, is what they have. That's so you have no one in their complete prime, per se. Exactly. So the thing is, is I think right now it looks like moving to kind of trade deadline stuff. It looks like Duchesne and Landeskog are on the block, and they're going to kind of keep Rantanen, Grigorenko, and... Um, McKinnon. McKinnon. The other but person... that's so weird, because as a one-two punch... Duchesne and McKinnon are pretty fucking good. Like, why would you... Wouldn't you want to keep that... And go from there? Because they also have Carl Soderberg. Oh, because they sewered themselves to that sewered. contract. Okay. But um, having McKinnon, Soderberg, and Gergorenko as your top three centermen isn't a bad No, no, situation. no, I'm not pooping on the and, other guys. Either. Yeah. Um, it's just a weird, like... Then John I Mitchell w- is four. The fact is, is they feel that they can go out and get help outside their organization. You know, there might be something that sees Ottawa interested in Linus Cog. And the player... What would be going back the other way? Curtis Lazar. How does that fix anything? It doesn't fix anything. But that's that's the type of moves they're looking to make in... Like, I think a lot of people harped on them and were upset about their uh, Mikel Bodker pick last year. But I think that those are the types of players they need to find. They need to find their own Drew Staffords. They need to find... a. They need a Blake Wheeler on that team. They need a guy who's been in the league for a while, has gone through a couple contracts, and knows... How to play in the NHL because they just have a bunch of young players. They don't. They're they're Edmonton Oilers. They have all the talent in the world, but they have zero experience. Who would Martin Hansel's available? Martin Hansel's available. Well, half of the every veteran on the Arizona Coyotes is available. Yeah, but it also depends on if they're gonna release him or not. Like speaking of Colorado, but. Again, I said, like, he would welcome... I didn't think he said exactly like this, but he didn't say no to being traded. Yeah. But, oh, at he, this he's point, well, he's he wants to win. He wants to win. So, he yeah. knows that it's not going to be with Colorado this year. A lot of people are rumoring that he's going to go to Calgary. I would not be surprised Let the guy end his career there. It's... I, I'm pretty sure that Joe Sackick and, and Feaster can make a, a, a deal. Yeah. Um, They've done it before. Exactly. Uh... I think the Avalanche just need to, as bad as it sounds, they need to get older. They are too young. And they need a little bit of help on the blue line, but so does almost every team in the NHL. But depending on if they except luck- Except for the Anaheim now, Ducks. Now, if have- they luck in to the first pick, do you keep that pick? Or do you package it for like a very good... Now, if they keep it, technically they don't need another center. But if they do draft a center, please make it Nolan Patrick. For the nines. For the nines. But then you have Nolan Patrick and Nathan And he can't wear 91. He can't wear 19. He can wear 91. Yeah, he can. Good save. Okay. Um, So it'd be McKinnon and him. McKinnon and Patrick would be their their one-two centerman punch. And then Soderberg would be the third. And then Soderberg, or you you don't protect Soderberg. Because you'll... uh, you might not know by no, then, but yeah, you have yeah. the opportunity, right? Um, I think they'll know by then, actually, what yeah, position you would, they're in. Yeah, you would. Um, like, the draft, the expansion draft is in between the cup but when winner But when is and the lottery? Isn't the lottery last day, like, last... It's in April, isn't it? The lottery is in April. You find out... In April. I think... It, well, last year it happened. Didn't it happen between the first and the second round? Okay. Regardless. You'll find out you before. You find out. You yeah, find out yeah. before. So, it's almost like... If Soda, if you could unprotect Soderberg, like I know that sounds like a, a big player to lose, but he's making four point seven five, and like also you, it affords you the ability of having breathing room. I think they already for, have it. Yeah, but like but, oh, breathing room to get some guys in the future. But yeah, they need to get. Oh, they they really need Kevin Shattenkirk on that team, but they're not going to get him. That's back. so weird. They traded him. I know. They had him. <laughs> There's a few guys that. Like, if you could undo it, okay, let's use the Leafs. Could you, if you could undo one trade in the last, like, five years, is there Five any, years, or can I go... Uh, acquisition. Any signing or anything in the last... I'll well, do ten. I'll do ten. David Clark, sorry. Okay, perfect. Mine's JVR with the Flyers. No way do I make that deal Oh, again. I'm so happy about that deal. No, if I know, we, but I'm saying... It, like, if we gotta yeah. make it ten years, the Tuka Rask trade. Let's set Toronto back. That literally years. did, eh? That's at the back. Every of the years. every franchise though has that. Like the death of Pelly Lindgren with the Flyers, I wasn't alive then. But like he, he like from all the, I mean, mind you, folklore makes people seem a lot better than what they were. But like it seemed from his stats and from the very few 
couple seasons he played, he was going to be like the deal, like the goalie for like a decade. And then he passed away in a car accident. But like, anyway, I, stuff I've like kind that. Of, I've kind of theorized this for a while. Go ahead. If the Canucks have Luke Bardot in 2011, I think they win the championship. I think yeah, no, and off. stuff like like every franchise has stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's it's shitty. Like, it's just weird how Colorado like they want a guy that they traded away and like the trade that they traded for that was for Stewart, right? Who Chris Stewart, Anthony Stewart? They got Chris Stewart and they got Eric Johnson. Oh, never mind. Okay, I thought that trade was all for naught. So they still use they still use him. So that's that's I'm glad that happened. Regardless, yep. Um, I think the Avalanche have the ability to turn it around. I think they. I don't think, like, I read an article that says they should blow it all up. I don't agree with that. I think they can do a semi-quasi-rebuild, kind of like what Boston's doing, where they're just plugging players in. They don't need to do what Toronto did, which is get a bunch of old guys and blow it all up. They can pick and choose where they need to put certain players. So that might be... uh, Interesting development as the season goes on. So trade bait time as we are running out of time almost. We've already covered Aginla potentially going to the Flames. Shattenkirk, who are your top five top five teams who you think Shattenkirk's going to go to? Shattenkirk? For oh, Shattenkirk. Man, I haven't thought about this. Um, I'd love to see Winnipeg. That'd be great. Okay, Winnipeg, one. Mm. Flyers? No. They, because the Flyers... Okay, Leafs. Be, we'll, oh, yeah, yeah your Leafs. Leafs. Uh, I'll, I'll just name three because I'm drawing blank okay. right now. Um... Who are you going to go with? I'll just... I'm going to go Jets, Leafs, Leafs obviously. Uh, you know what? I'm going to toss in stars. Boston. Oh, Stars? I would toss in Boston. Although for some reason, they always yeah, want D. Yeah. Uh, or the Rangers. But yeah. Stars wouldn't get them because that's inside the division. And same with Jets. So it's a little bit more far-fetched. I'd way. love to see the Leafs. I would I'm, love to see that. I'm concerned with what they'd have to give up. Uh, one destination spot for both Duchesne and Landeskog. Okay, we were talking about this last week. I'm sold on your suggestion of Landis Gog to Florida. Yeah. Pretty sold on that one. Duchesne? Oh, man. I totally forgot we you did know, this last week. Before that's fine. That First one that came to mind, I have no idea why. I don't think it's plausible. I don't know how it would happen. I could see Duchesne in an Islanders jersey. I don't know why. I think you said that last week. Did I? I don't know. Well, either way, I'll stick with my Islanders pick then. What about you? Duchesne. Weird thing was, I was going to say... Who they should target in two years? V. John Tavares. The, the Avalanche. The Avalanche? Yeah, right. Like they trade Tavares this they year. They wouldn't though? trade him. They would go and sign him as a UFA because he's not He's not fucking staying there. He's not staying in that shithole of the Islanders. They don't even have a home in two years. I know. Uh, <laughs> we're never allowed in Brooklyn. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, with Duchesne, yeah, I want to see him as, as a Leaf, but I Kay. know that won't happen. But I want to see him as a Leaf. Okay, then there you go. That's yeah. a pick. Uh, Landis Cog, as much as I want that Florida pick, I could also see him ending up in Ottawa. No. I don't want that. Bishop and Fleury. Where do you see Bishop going? Where do you see Fleury going? So they're sold. I'd if, love they're, to, if they're getting traded, if I'm picking, where are you going? I'd love to see Fleury in Winnipeg because when I do go to the games and watch, I'd rather watch a competitive team than the team I watch I watch on Saturday against an app. So I'll say Winnipeg for Fleury. Bishop, goalie. Oh, man. I'm going to be real biased here. I want him to be a flyer because I want consistency in the net, which is something I've never had as a flyer fan. <laughs> I'm going to go different. Kate, go Flurry. For oh, for Flurry, Jets. Kate Bishop. Bishop, Calgary. Oh, damn, that's a good one. Ooh, I had two two thoughts: either Islanders or Calgary. Kate. The other thing too is I could also see Simeon Varlamov getting moved from Colorado. He's injured. Can you get traded? No, not injured? this year. But I'm just saying it as a future. In oh, the and then future. Bishop going there? Not Bishop going there, just yeah, in the future. But imagine. Imagine this. Like the little retooling of Bishop going there, and like whatever you get in return from one of the... T- I'm pretty certain one of Duchesne or Landis Gog, if not both. I don't want to see both, but I'm pretty sure one of the two are gone this year yeah. for the amount of speculation that's going on. Mm-hmm. The other thing, too, is if Varlamov doesn't get traded this year, might get traded next year, I could see Varlamov being the next goalie in the New York Rangers franchise after Lundqvist retires that anti-ranta. that's my long shot pick that's okay that's all uh, right. Jordan Eberle apparently is on the trade block again yeah where do you where do you see him going where is he rumored to go I don't know year? I haven't even I don't Damn, know probably, I thought probably about, like I mean, New York one. Boston one of those places hmm. the usual 
Oh, man. Eberle. I'll go with the Rangers. I don't know. I haven't thought about this at all. Eberle is a Philadelphia Flyer. No! For what? For what? What's going that way? I don't know. Radko Gudis? No. I can't have that. <laughs> can't have that. You know what? Uh, Sean hate, Couturier. Yeah. I hate that you said that. Because like... <laughs> Sean Couturier. Like the mo- I was about to be like, well, the other 14... Which is fine. I could just do a name bar switch. Would you get Everly on your name bar? Yeah. If he's going to be on the team, I'd do it. I don't mind Everly. Young, young center who can win draws in the playoffs. He's like, a winger. Couturier? Oh, Couturier. Go into the... But Couturier's orders. a poor man's but dry if cycle. you get like, Couturier, you don't Couturier and Gudis. For Eberly, that's a little much. Toss us really? A, really? Are you really? shitting me? Do you for the think value, so? value for the cake? Okay, I watch Flyer games. For the value that Katuri and Gudis bring to the Flyers, okay, there's fair no way Eberle on his own is bringing that value. Okay. That's fair. Because like no, and like I'll say, I'll be the first to admit, like you guys know this, like Gudis is not great. I love him for what he is, but being be, badass because of the situation, <laughs> yeah, because of the situation that the Flyers are in, they don't have that much depth at D right now. That's fair. Yeah. So because of that. Gudis plays like 18 to 20, or like 16 to 19 minutes a night. Eberle's not going to offset that with his play. Like, he's not. He's not going to average a point a game with the Flyers. I can't see it. Like, he's going to be a Blake Wheeler. No, that's a bad comparison. He's going to be, like, hopefully a point every two games. Or every, like, game and a half. That'd be awesome. But, yes, I would do the name bar change because, I mean, I've got to get my value. I love Couturier, but... I would cheer for Matt the Oilers. I don't. I don't dislike the Oilers, but I'm growing not fondly of Connor McDavid. Rumor has it Curtis Lazar also on the block. Where do you see him going? I have thought. I Addition, care. Vancouver he, Canucks. Okay, that's fine. Only reason I was about to say I don't care about where he goes. I like Curtis small Lazar. name bar. Very few vowels. Very few vowels. Two. Only two. They don't. Uh, ben Hutton, Carter Hutton, twenty-seven. Whatever. Uh, it's gonna have to change the number. That's a big Carter deal. Hutton. They ben, don't have Carter. Ben Hutton. Hutton. They have a Hutton. They have a Hutton. Yes. Ben must yes. be Ben because yeah. Carter Hutton's in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, oh, fun fact about Curtis Lazar, unrelated. Uh, his two former Edmonton Oil Kings got traded for each other. So Mitch Morose, the Oilers traded Mitch Morose to the Coyotes for Henrik Sam- Samuelson. Based off your face, you don't care. I don't know. Many who they don't are. know, but I thought yeah. it was cool. Former teammates got traded. We got two, three, th- couple things to quickly get to. Go. What team makes the biggest splash in trade deadline as kind of like a preview to? We'll be talking about it all month, but who do you think right now, as going into who do you think makes the biggest splash? Only one team. Pick one team. Honestly. One team? Ooh. One team. Ooh. Colorado. I want them to do moves. Okay. I want them to be good. My pick is going to be the Ottawa Senators. Okay. Nice. Uh, speaking of those Ottawa Senators, Craig Anderson is 100% and is set to make his return from his personal leave very soon with the... Ottawa Senators. Okay. Uh, Sebastian Ajo, Mikel Granlin, and Peter Budai were the NHL's three stars this week, regardless of the fact that Budai got shelled yesterday by the Washington Capitals 5 0. Yeah. Man, Budai, seven shutouts. I know, it's ridiculous. <gasps> it's because they have defense there. They have a good team. <laughs> you could cover up an average goalie exactly. with good defense. Jets. Look at what Chicago's been doing. Yep. Uh, yeah. Will Nylander gets his first career hat trick as Leafs find a way to beat the Bruins. They're up four one in Boston. Lose the lead, get it back, lose it again, and then win with a minute thirty. You know who also got his first career hat trick? Mikhail Olaf from Bland- Brandland. Can't yeah. even say it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And as it just came in, <laughs> Connor Bra- or Zach Hyman scored his third shorthanded goal of the season, oh, which sh- sets. Leafs rookie record for most short-handed goals in the season. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, buddy. I, you know what? Hot take. He yeah. finishes with nine on the season. Short-handed goals? Yeah. No. Fine. Seven. I'll go with four. He plays a lot of defense. He does. But he's, he's very good. Very good. good. Oh, okay. Is Do you he want a to rookie? Run? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. The Leafs set a record. Fourth month in. Fourth month. So there's still a few more months to do this. Marner. <laughs> Rookie of the Month in January. Matthews, December. Nylander, October. Leafs are the first team ever to have three separate rookies win Rookie of the Month honors. Okay, so how do, how do they start April or February? Let me tell you what's happening in this Islander game. Go ahead. They're currently up 4-3. Are they? Do you, Yeah. Do you want to know who the goal scorers are? I hope Willie Hockey got one. Zach Hyman with a goal. That's a rookie. Mitch Marner with a goal. That's a rookie. Austin Matthews with a goal. Also a rookie. Nikita Soshnikov. Shut with a goal. up! Four rook. Oh, beautiful. Four different players. <laughs> That's awesome. All rookies. Oh. All have goals. Dude, this 
team. <laughs> by the way, by the way, I don't want Leafs making the playoffs. Why? Why? It's so much fun. It's fun. I want them to make playoffs real bad. I would rather have them suck because yesterday I went through the most agonizing three hours of my life. Oh, there it is. Okay. Are you going to say it? We already know you're a Falcons fan. Like, I'll set it up. I play dodgeball Sunday nights. I left when they were up 28 to 3, so by 25 points. And I was excited. I was like, guys, you know what? I was being a dick to my friend Greg. He's a Cubs fan and a Falcons fan and a Leafs fan. He knows. He knows what I'll never know. Like, I hope I never have to go through what you've already gone through for your life so far. 25 years. Like... I don't ever want anyone to experience that agony. And I was like, it's over. Like, he's having a great year. Let's hope, you know what? Falcons already got in the bag. Leafs are making the playoffs. Life is good. We're seeing the grass is greener on the other side. That's your grass now. That's your grass. Greg, what happened? Everyone knows what happened. The but grass is not greener. No? What happened? I felt worse. Like, I made my peace with it as soon as they scored the touchdown in overtime. Like, I... I, it took me about it took me a couple hours after the Leafs lost to the Bruins to to kind of make my peace with a it. Like a couple hours, I, I'm not over it. Yeah, no, and I'm not over this loss. No. I still haven't looked at the highlights. Oh, but like instantly, you're like, you know what? It was gonna happen. Like I, I didn't want this to happen. No, no one but did. I I knew like the Falcons for what they were. I didn't think that at the beginning of the year, if you had asked me, I would never have thought they'd be there. The fact that they made it there was amazing. The fact that they had a lead going into the fourth quarter was amazing. But being a Leaf fan for 25 years has taught me one thing. No lead is safe. And experience wins. You know what I also saw? Experience wins. There's an upside though. So there's an article, I think retweeted, either way by Down Goes Brown saying like, Falcons fans, don't, at least you're not a Leafs fan. And then I saw you tweeted, what if I'm a Falcons and Leafs fan? And down goes Brown, tweet it back at you. What do you say? Drink. He said drink. <laughs> That's awesome, though, because <laughs> you got to reply. That's pretty dope. It was, uh, like, I got home yesterday after it, and the funny thing was is I won my fantasy football league, and our trophy looks like the Lombardi trophy. Oh, no. So, like, I'm holding this thing, and, like, this is, it's nice, like, it was sweet to get the trophy when I showed up at the Super Bowl party last night. I'm like, I got the trophy. I feel good about myself. And everyone's saying how it's the year of Greg. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Because Des Bryant threw a touchdown to allow me to win my championship in the first place. And Des Bryant's a wide receiver who Weird normally doesn't win. throw touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. So all that cu- culminated into this team that at the beginning of the year lost to the Tampa Bay Bucks week one. They had no real chance. No one thought it. They just thought it was going to be another year. They finished 8-8 eight and eight last year. And they go all the way to the Super Bowl. They beat the Seahawks and the Packers. And then they go face Tom Brady. Matt Ryan just won MVP the night before. Like, everything was going the Falcons' way. And in an hour, it just it twisted. And it was just like... It was exactly reminiscent of the Game 7 against Boston. It yeah. was... Completely reminisce. As soon as they scored that first touchdown, I'm like, oh no. Oh no. It and then they got, the same, then they got the same feeling too. Then they got the ball back. And then they fumbled it. Or then they, yeah, they fumbled it. And then they got a quick score and the two point conference. I'm like, oh no. And then they get this within. This is happening much quicker than I thought. Then they get within the, the yeah, then they get within the 30. And I'm like, okay, they're going to get a field goal here. They're going to be up by 11. Like with like three minutes left. No, they fuck that up. And then I'm just thinking to myself, it's the same as when, I believe it was Kadri, that came down and hit the fucking post with like eight minutes left in the game in game seven. He makes that goal. It's 5-2. It's pretty much over at that point. Chances of that being a collapse. Yeah, because you have to deal with the fact that you just got scored on again and now you've got to get another goal to get another one and another one just to tie. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's what it felt like. Like, it felt exactly like somebody was like, Toronto Maple Leafs, Atlanta Falcons meet each other, and like the fan, like I, I like I said, I haven't watched highlights. I've barely read anything about it. I haven't looked at commercials. Like I have completely desensitized myself from everything. I'm just not looking at anything. Like something could have, like Goodell could have been shot after the game. Like God or, forbid. Like, yeah, like when when he was presenting the MVP to uh, Tom Brady, I wouldn't have known about it. 
because I didn't care. I I was just so ready to be like, okay, like drafts. everything kind of like, mm, like yeah. just went hazy. And like in five in five or in April, it'll be the draft. I'll be excited for that, and then once you know preseason comes around, I'll be excited for that. But it, you know what's garbage about this too? Just like dealing with okay, because I like when the Flyers were against the Hawks, I was a Flyers fan. Yeah, like I wasn't the full fledged Flyers fan I am now. But yeah, it normally every, takes the team losing to really get you. Well, every excited. time though, every time the Flyers make the playoffs now, every time it's like, do they have what's in them to make it back to the cup? And are they going to overcome what they couldn't do last time? Like that's what's crap about losing in a championship game, which I hate. It sucks because I remember he the was night. like the thing is is I'm such a Matt Ryan advocate, and you know that. Oh, yeah, I do. I ever As, I was shooting crap at you the uh, night before you won MVP, and then you just zinged me on Twitter. You got me so good. Um, but the thing is, is it's like, like I, I have believed in this guy. It's and it feels very reminiscent of the way I like had full trust in James Reimer. Like I have full trust in James Reimer, uh, and always have. But everyone always said, oh, he's not that good. Oh, he chokes in big moments. Oh, this, oh, that. And, like, you look at his numbers in the playoffs, and they're still pretty damn good. You look at the first quarter yesterday, he had a 158.3 passer rate. Isn't that the best he could perfect. be? perfect. Okay, so that's and the he best he could be. two incompletions up to that point. And it all came crumbling down like the Roman Empire. It was brutal. And I have... I, I still haven't come to grip. Like, I've made my peace... And, like, I, I haven't let it affect my, like, morality. I haven't let it affect my, like, body. But it's still, like, everyone last night texted me. And they're like, how are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah. And my reply was, I'm like, I'm a Leaf fan. I'm prepared for this. And it's, God. Damn. So painful. Yeah. Well, I remember, like, the night that the Flyers lost. Like, first off, the, when Kane scored the goal, I was like, that's not in. That's not in. And then they showed the replay. I'm like, oh, that was in. That was in. And right after that game, we went to go see a movie. And it was the one with Adrian Brody where he, like, makes an alien and then falls in love Who's with... Who's Adrian Brody? The guy with the big schnoz. He's an ugly dude. Okay. Anyways, and then, like, the alien is, like, a girl, but then it turns to a guy. I couldn't... I only know this now... Because I don't remember what movie it was until I was like, I don't think I've ever seen this, hanging out with a few friends. And then we watched it. And I didn't remember what movie it was until the moment it started playing. I had flashbacks of that game where the Flyers, I'm just like, oh, oh, Kane, short side, no way. No way he's scoring this. No way. Chemo team and it had a stick on it too. Like, no way. No way. Yeah, I, I associate that movie with that. It's just, ah, oh, it's crap. But the bright side is they're a very good team. They're probably going to still make noise next year because they're still incredibly competitive. And the Leafs are on the up and up. Leafs are on the up and up. But how do... Like, it's probably because I've never had a team That's the biggest that comeback does. in NFL history. I, I know, yes, because my teams love to make history on the negative side. They yeah, love to do yeah, it. Yeah. It's also the first overtime game in a Super Bowl. I did not know that. Um, so, yeah, that, that also happened last night. Yeah. And uh, Oh, good. Wait, hold on. Yeah, so now every time there's a team up by a big amount, you're going to hear that. Even if they win, you're still going to hear it, too. Like, next year, if they win... The thing is, is going into the game, I didn't think they were going to win. And it's the same with the Boston series. I never thought they'd beat Boston. I didn't think they were going to make it to Game 7. But the other thing, too... No, it was Game 7. Was, um... I look at the team, like, and this is very football. And if you don't listen to football, you can tune out now. They have a very young defense... And they have a very good head coach in Dan Quinn, who I believe is going to lead this team to multiple Super Bowls. Uh, they have Matt Ryan, who just came off an MVP season. Unfortunately, they're losing the quarterback coach and their offensive coordinator. But I still believe that they can make it work next season. It might not be as good next year. They might not win that division. The NFC South has always been kind of a uh, flippy flop. Like it always changes. Who's ever the best is the worst the next year. Like. Look at the Carolina Panthers. They went to the Super Bowl last year. They were one of the worst teams in that division this year. Regardless, they have a very young defense and has shown splashes at times, including last night against the Patriots, that they can play. And like their last two, like their last big draft picks, you know, Keanu Neal, Vic Beasley Jr., Deion Jones, they've been huge players. And I am extremely excited for the future of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, Matt Ryan showed himself this year to be one of the best in the league. 
this isn't going to be the last time they'll be in the final, like last time they'll be in the Super Bowl. I hope it's again soon, but uh, this is it's it sticks with you. Like it's it's funny. Like people still mention like people um, people who were fans back in the eighties mentioned the high stick that Doug Gilmore got from Wayne Gretzky, and they they'll mention it all the time. Like Leaf fans hold on to things. I think I'll be holding on to this forever. Like it's just one of those things. Like I'll be an old man and be like. Hey, da- hey, Dad, like my kid, if I have a kid, will be the like... The Falcons are up by 30. <laughs> Halftime. They're going to win it. Take it back. <laughs> Take it back. Bree. <laughs> no, Tom Brady's the coach. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Funny st- story about that last night. Kay. Did you hear about this? I probably didn't. I don't know. So, the Falcons are up 28-3. to three. Over the New England Patriots. Mm -hmm. Tweeting during the game was tennis star Jeannie Bouchard. Okay. And she was, I think, cheering for the Falcons and said, there's no way the Patriots can come back. One of her followers says, Patriots come back, you go on a date with me. No way. She replies, sure. Really? And? Staying true to her word. She's going on a date with a guy because the Patriots came back. Where does the guy live? I don't know. But in his profile picture, he has him wearing a LeBron Cavs shirt or jersey. Wow, good for that guy. What did we learn today? Shoot for the moon. Shoot for the moon. Things happen. If there's a team I cheer for, bet against them and you'll win. Yeah. Yeah. If there's anyone that knows perseverance more than Greg as a sports fan, I want to meet that person because they're not real. They're not real. There's no way. There's no way. (laughs) There's no such thing as a Cleveland Browns, Toronto Maple Leaf fan. It doesn't exist. Well, that's like... No, if the if the Leafs ever make it to the Cup final and they're up three to one in the series, and the third period, five minutes left in the game, they're up seven nothing. Greg's still gonna be like, "There's still time. There is still time." <laughs> like people joke about planning the parade. I don't. I will never plan a par- like. I'll never plan the parade for the Leafs until it's like game like game five, like Cam said, and they're up like ten nothing. And there's 30 seconds on the clock where legitimately they can't do it. Where I'm like going to be cheering. Like I'll be cheering when they score, obviously. Yeah. But like there's always that doubt in the back of your head. But yep. honestly, I think next time one of my favorite teams makes it into the big thing, I want to go watch it. That was pretty sweet. I would have loved. You know what? You know what? If they make it next year to the big thing. It's in Minnesota. Awfully close to Winnipeg, Greg. Oh. Awfully close to Winnipeg. I can make the day trip. And you know what's going to be sweet? The Vikings. They're not going to be there. Hey, They're screw terrible. you. They finished 8-8 eight eight this year. Falcons did it last year. There's hope. There's hope. How dare you? Take I'm that sorry. back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sam Bradford and Teddy Bridgewater together combined, if they could DBZ fuse, would still not equal nearly as good of a quarterback as Matt Ryan. I would say it doesn't matter about the quarterback <laughs> as much as everyone else on the field. Here's my I question. Think. Who's going to be running the ball next year? Matt Asiata? Because it's not going to be Adrian Peterson. Mm, pretty sweet draft this year. Now, the Vikings don't have a first round pick. <laughs> so I hope there's a pretty sweet running back left in the third round because I don't know if they have a second round pick either. Um, the Eagles, as they said, fleeced the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about football. we got to wrap it. We've been talking about we football do. now. Closing uh, words. Oh. Oh, yeah, you pull out your notes. Last closing words. Here we go. Patrick Sprade, Vancouver in 26th, Dallas in 27th, Tampa in 28th, Arizona in 29th, Colorado in 3rd. Uh, I don't want Tampa to win that. That ain't right. That ain't right. Then they can get rid of Kucherov or Johnson. Or not Kucherov, oh, yeah, sorry, Johnson or Black. Oh, yeah, because they to the yeah. Stephen Stamkos train. Oh, no, I mean, we can't start it. We can't start it. Where do they find us? On YouTube, Last Man in Podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast, whether that be a podcast app in iTunes, iTunes itself, or Google Play. Look up Last Man in Podcast. You'll find us there. We don't have a profile picture, so we'll just say, Podomatic Podcast. We actually made that a New Year's resolution, so we have to fix that real soon. Maybe I want I would love if our, pro, if our picture on Podomatic was the three of us cartooned, talking. Yeah, but no one knows what we look like. We have, we have commission friends. friends to we have do friends. It. I have someone who could do it. I just he's I he's good. So we're gonna have to pay for it. I I would be willing to pay money, actual <laughs> green to do yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Because I think it'd be cool. If if you actually have this friend, then we should. I could. He's listening to this right now for sure. Especially the football part. Definitely the football part. 
then yeah, contact him. I will. Uh, you can check us out uh, if you want to tweet at the show. Yep. At Last Minute PC on Twitter. Yep. If you want to email the show, Last Minute Pot, uh, PC at gmail.com. Yeah. Well, if your name's not Luke, Cam might not check it because it's like when he's interchanging the Google accounts, he's got Last Minute Podcast and Luke. And he just interchanges. That's why we never have emails. I'm always on Luke's email, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, That's why sure. you never check it. Yeah, definitely. That's why you can always just if comment. If you made it this as, far, oh. comment who your football team is. Yes. Like whether CFL, NFL. Oh, Greg. Fucking Leafs cannot hold a lead. What happened? They, they, they Fucking New York tied it. No! It's four, they were up 4-1, weren't they? No, they are up 4-2. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. It's teams.